One of your major collaborators, along with Vanessa Williams, another one that you've worked with time and time again is RuPaul. Tell me about when you first met RuPaul. You guys, again, have a lot of history. Yeah, when the first time I met Ru was, um, I knew I knew uh, Ru's management, the, the guys from World of Wonder, Randy and Fenton. Um, okay, I'll go back. I'll go. I'll go back before that because this is actually a good story. I, I wanted to. Are you familiar with Christine W? She's big. Yeah, dance the dance artist. artist. Yeah, yeah. So she came out with a tra- an album in 1995. And I was obsessed with this album and I wanted to photograph her so bad. Um, so I looked on the back of the CD and I saw who the management company was and I literally just called them and I said, Hey, I work for a magazine. I want to photograph Christine. Um, and back then there was no, like, you know, there was no vetting this sort of thing. Like people were like, Oh, okay. You well, you're interested in my client? Like, sure. So we set up a photo shoot and it was amazing. It turned out amazing. And then of course there was no magazine. Um, so I said, I oh, said, Oh, you know, the magazine folded. So there's, you know, unfortunately they're not, you know, the images are not going to be published, but they loved them so much that they ended up using them on her CD cover um, oh, wow. for Christine W. And then, so then I bonded with them. Like I bonded with the guys at world of wonder and they, they were handling Rue and they said, Oh, Rue's doing a video. Um, do you want to come and do some like onset stills? And that was, I think, in 1996. And I went to the set of this video, and it was it was RuPaul, Candace Kane, oh god, and some other very well known drag queen. It's been that's on the tip of my tongue. Um, they were doing this like sci fi thing. They were in a spaceship, and so I, I did a bunch of onset stills, and that's that's when I met Ru, and um, and then I I started going to like functions at. at uh, Randy and Fenton's home and Rue was there and we get to chatting and and then um, you know we just then I did a couple of shoots with him and I, in 2004 I directed uh, he asked me if I wanted to do the music video for Looking Good Feeling Gorgeous so I said sure so I did that video and um, it went so well that he asked me if I wanted to direct Star Booty so we did that um, and that was like the most incredible experience of my entire life. Like that whole, we shot it in 2005. It was, it, we started doing the film festival circuit in 2007 through the end of 2008. And that three year period was like the best three years of my life. Like everything surrounding that movie was just, I mean, I just, it was constant fun. Like we just had f- so much fun filming it, like laughing, like milk shooting out of our noses. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was grueling. Like we shot an entire feature film in three weeks. So, yeah. and it, it was like in the, in winter and it was, it was cold. It was in New York city. And, you know, so it was, it was, it was grueling and Rue would like, Rue was doing his own makeup. So then he would tape, you know, he would tape and for three weeks he was, he had, he was taping his, his you know, his eyebrows back and it was, it was so like, it was so raw at the end of the three weeks that it like left like a, a scab for like, oh, wow. two months on the side of his temples. Wow. Yeah. So that, so, I mean, it was, it was, it was hard work, but yeah. it, it was just looks like, like you guys fun. had, looks like you caused absolute chaos around New York city in the most awesome oh. gor- gorilla style. Like that film is so fabulous to watch. Total, total gorilla style. We shot that. The day that we wrapped is when they broke ground to build the Standard Hotel. We literally shot oh, wow. at the base of the Standard Hotel, and it was all like dilapidated and like you know. I mean, you saw. I mean, if you've seen Star Booty, yeah. you know, it was like very like like urban, like you know, derelict urban kind of scenario. Um, but it was again, it was it was just like so much fun. And then and then we thought, oh, you know, let's let's submit it to film festival. Like no one's gonna no one's gonna pick it up. And then of course, like every LGBT film Everybody. festival, like opened like opened with it and we were being flown all over the world for like film festivals like <laughs> you know, like i don't know like I, i've had a lot of stuff like that happen like you do something and you're like oh, okay you know you put it to rest and you know don't think much of it and then it just turns into this other thing which which is why i have such a fond recollection of, of that whole experience it was just it was just so much fun and then of course yeah. drag race came along and um you know, I was the, I was the guy at the, you know, I was, I, I, I mean, I, I suspect that they 
created that opening thing a for me challenge. because yeah yeah the photography challenge um because Rue asked me before, he goes, oh, I'm going to do this show and we're going to do this photographer thing. And do you want to be the photographer? And I'm like, yeah. So um, that was, you know, that was, that was insane. You know, like to, to see like how, like that's become like such a pop culture, like beast drag race. Phenomenon. Like insane. So like to be, to be there at the inception of it, like was, you know. It's pretty incredible, like to be totally. part yeah. of like such a pop cultural like phenomenon. Did you have any inkling when you got the call that there was any chance that it could blow up to be as big and as mainstream really as Drag Race has become? You don't, you know, you don't really think of that stuff, you know, when it's happening. Um, you, you know, I was just doing it and it was fun. And then the second season came around and then Rue's like, oh my God, we sold to like nine countries. And then like, and I'm like, oh, so that's when I thought, oh, this is like a real thing. You know, this isn't some like little cable show that's going to yeah. go unnoticed. Like it became, and then, you know, by the fourth or fifth season, they were in like 60 countries. And so, I mean, that was like that, you know, I mean, pretty early on, we came to realize that it was like going to be like a huge thing, you know, and yeah. now like insane like i go to rue's house and like the wall of emmys is blinding i can't even look at it <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> you know um, i mean like th th it's the most winning it's the most winning uh reality show in history yeah drag race it's, has it's won the most emmys of any reality show in in history like they have like i don't know what, like 45 emmys or some crazy thing yeah, it's insane anyway, how mainstream something that originally was so fringe and so niche specific for the gay community has become like, it's totally like as mainstream as mainstream can be. And it makes me think right. now Star, Star Booty was so risque. Do you think that there would be the chance of doing a Star Booty 2 now with RuPaul being in the current mainstream mix of things? Um. I mean, knowing knowing Rue, I mean, I, I just don't think he has the time to do it. But if if he were to do it, he would be subversive. Like he would, like I don't, I don't. I mean, unless you know, because he has he has a development deal with Sony, and he has like all this big stuff going on. So unless his advisors told him that it would be detrimental to all to any of that, you know, I I, I think he would do it, but. But then on the flip side, like he just doesn't have the time to do it. Like he's working on like a million things. Totally. I mean, he has like he has a staff of like five people in his house at all times, like just working on various projects. Crazy.